We're looking at early DNA experiments, and we just talk, finished talking about Griffin and his experiments and how he figured out that um, bacteria are able to pick up some kind of genetic material, turns out to be DNA, but some kind of genetic material um, from the environment, from dead bacteria. And so um, Avery, McLeod, and McCarthy tried to figure out um, what exactly was this transforming principle, the thing that the bacteria could pick up from dead bacteria. So they tried purifying the transforming principle that changed the R-type, the, the, the good type of bacteria, into the S-type, the virulent the, uh, pathogenic type. And so here was their experiment. They had live R-type um, and DNA extracted from purified S-type bacteria. So the live good type plus the DNA extracted from the S-type. And the mice died from pneumonia when they did that. And then they had live S-type bacteria cultured from lung fluid. So they saw the dead, back, the dead mice and um, took lung fluid out, so put a needle in and took out fluid from their lung and found the, the bad type. So it looks like it's DNA. That's the genetic material. So these S-type bacteria remain virulent for a generation um, after generation. So the compound that had the most effect as a transforming principle was colorless, viscous, and heat-stable, which is what's true of DNA, contained phosphorus, which if you remember from that chart we did of Tom's DNA has phosphorus. But remember, proteins do not. They have sulfur instead. It was not affected by trypsin, which is a protease, or amylase. So this is an enzyme that breaks down carbs, so it wasn't affected by that. And that's an enzyme that breaks down proteins. It was inhibited by RNAase and DNAase. So enzymes that break down nucleic acids um, inhibited or slowed it. So that's all evidence that says, hey, DNA is the genetic material. So the transforming principle in the genetic material is a nucleic acid. That is the conclusion. But most scientists didn't believe it, because why would you have a code with four letters instead of 20 letters? That's just illogical. Um, so it took scientists uh, quite a while to come around. Um, and here is the experiment that made them come around. So the confirmation of the DNA, of DNA as a genetic material. Um, Alfred Hershey and Martha, Martha Chase did these experiments. So in the 1950s, Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase knew that certain bacteriophages, uh, bacteriophage, remember, is a virus. And that's a virus that infects bacteria. And they knew that these viruses were made only out of protein and DNA. And so this is the virus that we were looking at before. Here's the bacterium. And here's the protein. Well, we know it's the protein, but they didn't at the time. And here's the DNA that's getting injected inside. And the protein coat is this. But they didn't know that yet. So they wanted to know, is it the protein or the DNA that contained the viral genetic information? And they assumed that um, whatever genetic information the virus used would be the same as for um, living things. And for the most part, they were right. So what remained outside the bacterial cell and what was injected into the bacterial cell? So they assumed that whatever was injected in is going to be the genetic information. And you already know what gets injected in, but they didn't have any proof of that yet. So do you remember the elements found in proteins and nucleic acids? So proteins have the elements chons. So it's all of chomps without the P. And nucleic acids have all of it without the S. So the difference is that proteins have sulfur and that nucleic acids have phosphorus. And so their experiment, this is super important, because their experiment has to do with using phosphorus or sulfur. So do you remember what an isotope is? I actually skipped that at the beginning of the year because I figured you'd forget by now anyway. So an isotope is a form of an element that has a different number of neutrons. So if you remember an atom, there are protons and neutrons. <laughs> 
in the center. So those are um, six positives. And let's say there are one, two, three, four, five, six neutrons. Um, if there's five pluses, there would be one, two, I mean six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, six um, pluses. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six minuses. Hopefully you can tell by the way I drew this that this is carbon because you remember maybe that carbon has four bonds. Anyway, sometimes protein, sometimes carbon has six neutrons and sometimes it has seven. It does not affect bonding. It can still make four bonds, but uh, it can make it radioactive. So if the number of neutrons is different, we call that an isotope. And I really did not go over that at the beginning of the year with you because it comes up now that it's, what is it? Um, by the time you hear this, it will be uh, May. Oh, I hope not, but it might be at least the end of April. So a radioactive isotope, that's an isotope with an unstable nucleus. So all those extra neutrons or fewer neutrons makes the uh, nucleus less stable. And so the nucleus decomposes spontaneously. It releases radioactive, radioactivity or radiation and particles. So Hershey and Chase used two different radioactive isotopes in their research. They used a radioactive sulfur, still bonds the same way and can turn, get into any protein just as any other sulfur would. And they used radioactive phosphorus. The number here refers to how many protons and neutrons together it would have. So phosphorus is part of DNA. So these isotopes served as something called tracers. If you have radioactive protein, but not, if you use radioactive sulfur and you grow some viruses, this part will be radioactive and you can measure that, but the DNA would not. If you use radioactive Oops. If you use radioactive phosphorus instead, then this part would be the radioactive part. So here's experiment number one. They grew bacteria in a culture medium of S35. Remember, that's the one that's in protein. So proteins have chons, but nucleic acids have chomp. So sulfur is in proteins and not DNA. So they grew bacteria in a culture medium of radioactive sulfur with no other form of sulfur. So the bacterial proteins had to become radioactive. The proteins were what we call labeled with the radioisotope. So if you have a Geiger counter and you bring it over to this, it'll go beep, 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 saying, hey, it's radioactive. Next, they added viruses or phages, which infected the bacteria. So here's the phage. It's injecting its, we know it's DNA, but they didn't. Here's the DNA, and it's going into the lysogenic cycle, uh, sorry, the lytic cycle. So it's going to come in here and say, hey, make more of me. So it's going to make the protein coats, and the protein will have sulfur incorporated into it. So the phage proteins made were also radioactive. Because the phages were grown in bacteria that um, had radioactive sulfur in them. So next, the labeled phages were allowed to infect a new batch of unlabeled bacteria. So this is totally clean bacteria that had zero radioactivity in them, not hot, clean, and they, um, the phages, remember the phages were radioactive. So they want to know what happens to the protein and what happens to the DNA. What is it that's getting injected in here? Is this a protein getting injected or is it DNA getting injected? So was protein injected into the bacteria? So next, they whirled the fluid. They whirled the fluid in a blender to separate the phages outside the bacterium from the contents in the bacteria. So this is the gentle, bzzz, you know, and it breaks off all the stuff outside. But this bacterium is left whole. So whatever got injected in is in. Remember, this is a clean, unlabeled bacterium, but something got injected in. Was it radioactive protein? or was the radioactive protein left outside? So then they centrifuged the mixture like this so that the bacteria formed a pellet at the bottom. So the pellet has bacteria in it. 
and um, everything outside the bacterial cells was suspended in the liquid. So this stuff was in the liquid and this stuff was in the pellet because the bacteria are more solid and they end up being heavier and coming to the bottom. Then they would pour this off into a beaker and they would measure the radioactivity, sorry, of this and the radioactivity of this separate from that. So they measured the radioactivity in the pellet and the liquid, then pour the liquid off and see if it was radioactive. The result was that the radioactivity was in the liquid, this part, not in the pellet, um, not in the bacteria. So that means in here, nothing hot. The radioactivity was out here. So that means the protein coat, that means the outside of the bacterium was made, sorry, the outside of the virus was made out of bacteria. Uh, Oh my god, the outside of the virus was made out of protein. So that's what they just proved. Then they did a totally different experiment. Totally clean bacteria, not radioactive. Brand new bacteria, brand new viruses. So they grew these new bacteria in a culture medium of phosphorus. And remember, chomp, these are the elements in DNA, not sulfur. So there was no other form of phosphorus. The bacterial DNA became radioactive because of the radioactive phosphorus. So the DNA was labeled with the radioisotope. Then they did all the same steps. So they added the phages, um, new phages, which infected the bacteria. At this point, the bacteria are radioactive. The phage DNA, now this stuff made, was radioactive. So next, the labeled phages were allowed to affect a brand new batch of unlabeled bacteria, so clean bacteria. And they want to know what's getting injected in. Is it radioactive? Because anything, the DNA is going to be radioactive. So if radioactive stuff gets in, that means DNA is getting in. So was DNA injected into the bacteria? So they word the fluid in a blender to separate out the phages um, outside the bacteria from the bacteria and their contents. So in other words, they unattached this stuff. Then they centrifuged the mixture so that the bacteria formed a pellet at the bottom of the test tube. This stuff is poured off and you use a gag counter to tell if there's radioactivity. And then you measure the radioactivity here. Everything outside the bacterial cells was suspended in the liquid. So this stuff is here and the lighter stuff is in here. Did radioactive DNA make it inside, or is there radioactivity here? Will you find radioactivity in the liquid or radioactivity in the bacteria? So the results, they measured the radioactivity in the pellet and the liquid, and the result is that the radioactivity was only in the pellet, the bacteria. So it was in the bacteria. So the experiment showed that phage, DNA, uh, phage proteins remain outside the host cell during infection while phage DNA enters the cell. So here you're infecting, here you're using radioactive sulfur, and it turns out that the radioactivity is here, which means it's here in the virus, the virus protein coats. So that means the coat is made out of protein. And here they, they grew radioactive um, phosphorus, so that means the DNA was radioactive, and they found that the DNA was in the pellet. So that means the bacteria was radioactive, which means the DNA got inside the bacterium. So this is the conclusive proof um, that DNA was a genetic material. So the genetic material of the bacteriophage, at least, is DNA, and it's true for the rest of us. And that is the end of my history lesson. Aren't you glad I teach biology instead?